Welcome to In the Envelope, a podcast from Backstage, the number one resource for actors and talent seekers. I am your host, Jack Smart, awards editor at Backstage, and I'm here to guide you through every aspect of the entertainment industry with the help of some of your favorite stars. These intimate, inspirational conversations with today's most award-worthy film, television, and theater artists provide you, dear listener, advice on how to live the creative life, personal stories of success and failure alike, and maybe, just maybe, a tantalizing glimpse in the envelope. on the one i'm so sorry oh same no no that's close <laughs> enough close enough in fact that's as good a start as any hello welcome podcast listeners christine hi <laughs> hey jack how are you doing <laughs> i'm i'm hanging in there um how are you doing i think i'm good i think that it helps to recognize that this is the week where we are now into the year of shutdown, right? Like work from home, pandemic. Oh my god, totally stuff. And so I think that we're all mm. we're all on Zooms today. I know that you know internally you're super busy. I'm super busy. And, yeah. And it's one of those moments where you realize, oh, I miss my office a little bit. <laughs> I do. I absolutely, completely. In fact, yeah. this is like another opportunity for the podcast to yeah, like pull back the curtain on backstage a little bit and. Yeah, we were just reminded it's been a year since we, as a company, have gone completely remote. Yeah. And um, I don't know how it's, yeah, I have not, I still don't really know how I'm going to feel about the one year anniversary of like Broadway shutting down, for example. Mm. And uh, I don't predict it's going to feel great. Yeah. But can I tell you the last Broadway show that I saw? Oh, tell me. Yeah, what was it? It was second stage, so it was technically off Broadway before Uh someone writes in and tells me. I know it's off Broadway. (laughs) Um, but it was we're gonna die, which no. I laughed. I'm serious, <laughs> and I laughed um, at the time with um, it was Harriet Bass, my friend and mentor, who I went with, and we had dinner. And you know, at the time, you just didn't realize what the world was going to be, uh, oh and um, and so we were kind of laughing at the at the the title and and the yeah. fact that the that Broadway was shutting down the next day. So I saw a show oh just God. before it had been announced that the the. the it was happening, but we got to see that one last show. So I, I personally, it was a very good show, but I also personally would love to see a show that is not, you know, quite as dramatic in title. <laughs> sure. Do you just miss it so much? Do you just miss the theater and just the entertainment industry as it used to be? Yeah. I mean, I mean it's in. my bread and butter. It's why I was in New York. I, yeah. you know, um, I have so many friends that work in it. It's, it's been a, it's been strange in that way, but, um, also innovation that needs to happen and you know yeah. s- some some really interesting things that are that have happened this year in the business and and I think there are things to keep here so Absolutely. and that kind of leads into what we started chatting about yes uh, this week with our with our casting team or part of our casting team Absolutely yes part of that's actually a good distinction like the expert voices that listeners are about to hear is only a sampling of backstage's expertise in this area yeah, um, and kind of to, you know, I I think, and I wish I'd said it to them while like we all had them together, but hmm. aren't they a, a, like a handsome bunch of voices? Like, I, and- well, yeah, absolutely, the voices. <laughs> I love hearing all of your distinctive voices, even yeah. distinctive like audio quality. Again, we're all remote. Like listeners know, we're not sitting in a conference room doing this or at a recording studio. I think so. Uh, yeah, listeners, we are we are gathered here today to talk about the state <laughs> of the industry, and it is fitting that it is yeah a, a year after the lockdown because it's worth updating. There's so, we're going to have to do these periodic updates, and we have, but not quite in this way. Christine, I'm sort of seeing this episode as like a follow up to your introduction episode of like introducing to listeners the idea that Backstage has a casting team and they're a team of experts that have their finger on the pulse of the industry. Because it's not just casting; it's the state of auditions. It's the state of like, what are the trends in the industry? What what is what has survived? And as you just said, like, what is going to carry over into a post-pandemic world? Because there are things to to draw from this period. Yeah, and what's interesting is the amount of things that have happened in 
within backstage even during this time and how, you know, we have kind of pivoted and reacted to this moment so that we can still be of value to the actors and creators that use us, right? So Mm. um, so I feel super lucky that we get we got Luke Crow on the call for a little bit today. Yeah. um, And he he (laughs) gets to reveal a few fun things. Um, And then of course we pulled different experts from our our different um development areas uh voiceover our la market and our uk market to yeah. kind of chat through what's happening yeah so i maybe let's do you want to re- reel off kind of who was in this roundtable discussion side note about luke crow he is sort of the equivalent of like he is uh an a-lister and just in terms of backstage <laughs> in my mind a hundred percent, you know, like legend. He, he's kind of a le- yeah. He's he's the longest uh, running backstage member, and he's has this encyclopedic knowledge of everything that our brand has gone through. And talk about finger on the pulse. One hundred percent, you know. Yeah. I'm always I marvel. A, you know, he's the guy you go to when you have any question about backstage. Full stop. Okay. But then, you know, tech related, casting related, you know, he's really a very um, knowledgeable and, and valuable and lovely guy. So he's yeah. a good guy to work for. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Awesome. And so who else? Yeah. Who else joined us? Oh, yeah. So we have Lou Crow, who is our VP of casting. We have Sonia Smith, who is our voiceover specialist, mm. uh, who's based in Canada. Uh, we have Hannah Williams, who you guys know already, um, who is our fabulous UK, one of our fabulous UK specialists. And then we have Christy Kleppinger, who is our LA specialist. Mm-hmm. Yes. And myself. And, and, and you yourself. might make an appearance. I don't know. Um, <laughs> depending on how the, how the edit goes <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i i was so i honestly i found this refreshing if only for the idea of like we're gonna have a podcast episode that we don't have to hear me nattering on i i really liked hearing a variety of different voices and as we said at the beginning you all sound gorgeous right well i didn't put myself in that key i'm just saying that you know <laughs> all my all the all those people that we gathered just sound really great on a voiceover oh you uh, always which... sound great no <laughs> and i and i think you all sound distinct and this is just like a comprehensive introduction i would say to the backstage team of experts and and all of their different areas of expertise and for those of you who are using backstage like what a great way to know what's going on in 2021 a very tumultuous time uh, in terms of backstage. And for those of you who have not signed up for backstage, but who are curious about becoming, you know, launching your career using our product, this is also kind of a great update from a team of experts. Um, yeah, it was so cool to hear from Sonia about voiceover, because voiceover is, of course, a recurring trend on this podcast. Yeah. And we've just featured Christina, and uh, we have had Hannah. So what a great team and I hope to be able to kind of keep doing kind of keep checking in with this team or iterations of backstage's casting team to um inform listeners and I think inspired this talk was really inspirational oh good I'm glad oh, I was yeah. on the inside so uh, yeah. you know you're never sure but they're such knowledgeable women I'm super excited to uh, share what they have to say and kind of give some additional insight as to what's happening right now mm-hmm. um, and yeah and to come back and, and have another chat with with kind of a rotating cast of our casting team yeah, because it's in a, it's innovating it's changing it's adapting mm-hmm. and, and uh, it's an ongoing conversation and of course here at Backstage is where you can find and all the knowledge you need to know. Totally. Okay, so unless, Christine, there's anything else uh, we are missing, shall we take a quick break and get to it? That sounds good to me. Oh my gosh. Thank you again so much. Uh, let's go hear from the backstage casting experts. Hey, are you ready? Yes, you, listener. Are you ready to take the advice and the inspiration you've heard here in today's interview and use it in your own acting career? Is it something maybe you've always considered doing? Are you at the very beginning of your acting career? Are you well into your acting career and you're a fan of this podcast and you're ready to take those next steps? Backstage is here for you. This podcast is brought to you by Backstage and what we are offering listeners to this podcast is a free 30-day trial. That's right. We are giving you 30 days completely free to try out Backstage. All you need to do is go to checkout, backstage.com slash subscribe and enter the code envelope. That's right. If you enter the code envelope at checkout, E-N-V-E-L-O-P-E, that's how you spell envelope, you get 30 free days on backstage.com. 
Browse our thousands of casting notices. Learn why it's the world's number one casting platform. If you are an actor and you haven't signed up yet for Backstage, I don't know what to tell you. Get on it. Hi guys, so this is, I feel super lucky to be able to have everybody in this one space because we're literally not just work from home, but zooming in from everywhere. Um, and I'm going to get everyone to do a quick intro in a moment. Um, but uh, Luke, I thought that um, we could start with you today. So um, if someone doesn't know who you are, Luke Crow, at Backstage, um, what would be your your elevator pitch? <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I run the kind of our, our overall like casting job, um, area of, of the backstage product. So we have a, we have a few different teams that work on business development and partnerships with the community, uh, as well as an, an entire team that manually reviews every single job listing and casting call posted on the site to try to weed out any scammers, um, answer any, you know, preemptively answer any questions that might occur in those those projects. Uh, key information has been left off or mistakes that might have been made, um, so we can present the best possible um, version of the jobs to to the talent uh, on the site. And while the business development team tries to uh, acquire more jobs for for our site, um, and then we also work in conjunction with uh, with the product development team to kind of improve those tools uh, to make everybody's lives a little bit easier as they're both finding and applying to um, jobs in the in the in the industry. I've been a backstage for a little over twenty years, and um, yeah, that's me. Yeah, I, I was just about to say yeah. you're you're being very modest because you're our VP of casting. You you know you're you're the busiest man in showbiz. I like to say <laughs> because you're always always doing something um, across the departments. Um, and I know that Jack is super keen to get you in a full interview at some stage. So hopefully we can get you in for um, lo a longer period at some stage. Uh, but for now, I, I'd love to cover because you've been at backstage for twenty years. Um, what? What are the most exciting things that have happened in the last few years, uh, in your opinion, um, about where Backstage was and where it is now in your time? Mm. Yeah, well, we've. Um, I think some of the most exciting things they, they really go hand in hand is that the the product, the, the website itself, and the technology um, that's inherent in it has, has really developed a lot. So it's gone, you know, over the years from being a very basic, you, you essentially is like sending an email off. Um, you know, with with a with an act with maybe maybe one headshot, two headshots. So as we've gotten more and more technically savvy around things, um, being able to deliver very high quality videos, a lot of different media items um, to to the casting director, and then having a lot of management tools that the talent may not see, but becomes essential to the the casting process to be able to weed through um, a, a thousand submissions and kind of surface exactly what you need for a role. And to ease the communications around that, and a lot of that development has gone um, to kind of the next level in the in the last year, especially as we've introduced more uh, ability to, to handle things remotely, from self tape auditions to entire callback phases that are virtual to actual live virtual auditions, the ability to um, pay for delivery of a of a final product even through the site, and so that's I think you know it's it's helped both with the pandemic era of reducing the amount of times you have to leave leave your house to go to an audition or to do a recording, um, but has also helped. I think it will help a lot in the in the future as well. Mm -hmm. That it, it, it democratizes the process and people can apply from anywhere and be considered from anywhere and, and even deliver final product in some cases from anywhere. So I think we'll see those like those trends continue, and we'll keep playing into improving the technology around that as well to allow more people anywhere in the world to be able to participate in these creative projects. The cat is out of the bag in in the way that, you know, we, we've announced two really exciting acquisitions. I know you can't speak a lot about it at the moment because we're still figuring out everything and not all of it's public, but is there anything you can share about the two acquisitions that we've made recently? Yeah, so we, we've we recently acquired uh, two sites, mandy.com and starnow.com. Um, they they both have have some key strengths and so, and some overlap with what what backstage already does, but some some areas where we maybe weren't as as strong as well. Um, so Mandy has been around for for a very long time and are probably mostly known in the U.S. for being a, a site for production jobs and crew. Um, and they've 
they've been fulfilling that across the U.S. for a long time, especially in, in New York and L.A., but pretty much anywhere in the country. If you're looking for, for crew for a project of any size, you can go to Mandy. They're actually based out of London, um, where they also do a lot of crew work as well, but they're quite big um, across the pond for for casting as well. Uh, so they have a lot of talent that use the site there and, and a lot of casting that happens. While Star Now has uh, is based out of New Zealand, has lots and lots of casting calls for the New Zealand, Australia region, as well as, as England too. Um, so what we're looking at with these with these acquisitions is kind of strengthening our, the overall talent pool and the number of jobs that we can make available to them. Um, with backstages, you know, traditional strength being being in the U.S. Now combined with these sites that are able to help us reach Australia and England, um, they also have some touch points on on Asia and Europe and other areas. So we're hoping that between the three sites, we'll just be able to bring a lot more jobs uh, to talent across the globe and a lot more talent back to the to the casting directors and producers as well. Amazing. Um, Luke, that's all the questions I had for you at the moment, and I was going to let you go and then just kind of run Robin with these ladies. Okay. Thanks, guys. It was great chatting. Okay. So um, I'd love, first of all, just to do a quick round Robin of the gang that we've gathered from the casting team today. Um, so if you don't mind, I'll start with Sonia. Can you introduce yourself and tell us what you do here at Backstage? Yeah, you bet. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Sonia Smith, and I'm a voiceover casting specialist at Backstage. I joined the team in August of 2020, and I'm working remotely from Canada, from London, Ontario. And I have over five years in the voiceover casting industry that I bring to the Backstage team to help grow voiceover at Backstage. Fabulous. Hannah. I, the, the audience know you a little bit. And if you watch the Instagram lives that Hannah's been doing, they're amazing with our UK talent. Um, but Hannah, please introduce yourself and what you do. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Hannah. Um, I work in the UK. So I'm the UK casting specialist um, and I work remotely as well. Started in 2017 um, and now it's 2021, which is mad. Um, and I do everything that Sonia does, but just for the UK market. So lots of business development, lots of um, getting people to know the site and, and showing them the best ways to use it. Fantastic. And last but definitely not least, um, I call you Christy. Your full name is Christina, obviously. Christina, can you tell us more about yourself? Sure thing. Um, I am Christy, Christina Kleppinger, um, and I am our California-based casting specialist doing a lot of the same thing, outreach, partnerships, and business development here in California. I'd love to um, ask all three of you, because you're we're all from very you know, diverse backgrounds, very different spaces, and I'd love to know, obviously now we're in uh, we're sharing information about backstage. We're passionate about the entertainment business and empowering actors and creators alike. And that's what brings us here on this conversation today. But what brought you to the business? You know, I think everyone has very diverse, um, uh, different reasons to be here. So, you know, I, I think most people know at this stage, you know, I am an actor turned casting director. I spent a decade in casting and, or, you know, two years or so ago, I said, I think something's happening with tech. I was like, you know, I really see a difference in what's happening. And um, personally and professionally, I, I reached some some ceilings about, you know, really worked on some amazing projects. And I was excited to um, share my knowledge with bigger audiences. Um, and certainly Backstage is the perfect platform for something like that. Um, so I'd love um, for you guys to share just a little bit about your journey to sit in this chair today. Um, because I always like actors, you know, young people starting out in the business, whoever's listening to this, wherever you are in your career, it's nonlinear and you don't really know where you're going to end up and it's kind of fun so I always love to know a little bit more and um, Christy can I start with you yeah absolutely so I went to film school to be a filmmaker um, writer director specifically I moved to Los Angeles and started working as a talent at a talent agency um, I'd been told that that was the best boot camp for getting to know the industry and so that's where I started my career um, I moved from there to Nickelodeon's talent development and outreach team and was there for almost three years and then sold a screenplay and quit Nickelodeon and then 
right about the time that I was starting to look back into finding something closer to full time and wanting to really engage back in the the casting and talent side of the industry, the opportunity uh, presented itself at Backstage and it seemed like kind of the perfect blend of everything I love, working with casting and working with filmmakers, um, all the while supporting actors and what they want to do with their careers. Fantastic. Hannah? Um, so I, um, like most things in my life, absolutely came into casting by <laughs> fluke. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I um, I fell into it just through a weird situation that happened. But um, I studied photography, was working as a photographer, and then came into casting um, later on. Um, but uh, yeah, I started working in background casting. So I was casting hundreds of extras every day on um, film sets for studio features Um, and always knew that I wanted to continue in casting but wasn't sure which area I was going to work in so did a bit of reality TV casting and documentary um, looking for contributors and then um, about four and a half years ago I started casting projects um, just short films and music videos as a casting director in, in my own right and around that time yeah backstage was I don't remember how how I found the job but it was they were putting out feelers in the UK for people who might be suitable for the job because it just organically grew in the UK that people started signing up and people started posting jobs and so they were just looking for somebody um who would be able to know the industry over here and, and guide them a little bit of the way um and be on the ground. Um, and then myself and Neil, who is the other um, half of the UK cast and specialist team, uh, we joined, yeah, as I say, in 2017. And now I am casting projects whilst working with Backstage. And I've learned so much about the industry that I would never have experienced. And I get to speak to filmmakers and young actors and tell them about Backstage and tell them how Backstage can work within their careers and help their projects. And it's been the perfect marriage of everything um, for my career. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned Neil. We've got Neil Kennedy. We have Victoria Beale in Australia. We have Byron, who does our regional stuff. We uh, we have Gab who does brand. So I think people are surprised to know the size of the, <laughs> of the casting team sometimes, right? That, and that's just, um, not even on the editing side. We've got, uh, six or seven editors and, and two or three account managers who are really dedicated and awesome real people that you get to talk to when you work with backstage. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey, um, to sit with us today? Sure. So I have a similar um, journey to you, Christine, in that I started my career as a voice actress. Um, I actually studied philosophy at university. I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life and I got good grades in philosophy. So I just continued taking classes, but had no career path. Um, But in my final year of university, I took a speech class as an elective And my professor told me that I had a million dollar voice and that I needed to do something with it. And he encouraged me to try voice acting. And I did it for about a year and realized that it's a lot more difficult than just having a great voice. You also have to be a performer and understand acting and character development and all of that. And you also have to be an audio engineer and understand recording and, um, So after my little stint in voice acting, I decided to join the casting side of the industry, thinking what better way to learn than to understand a casting perspective. And I actually fell more in love with the casting side and being a part of the creative process and helping creators find the perfect voices for their projects. So did that for about um, three years, four years took a little bit of a break and then Backstage actually found me last summer as they were looking to grow their voiceover offering at Backstage. Um, And with my industry experience, um, I felt really privileged to be able to join the team at Backstage. I've always known about Backstage and how cool and awesome it is. And so I feel very grateful to be a part of the team and to help grow voiceover here at Backstage to help empower other voice actors to explore their career and um, bring more opportunities for them uh, through the platform. 
Yeah, every every week when I'm making the podcast and I, I get to listen to the interviews or read the interviews that Jack has done, um, I'm always so humbled to feel that connection with an actor that I admire when they say that they, uh, unprompted, that they got their first job through backstage or, you know, it was there, they, it helped them figure out uh, something incredibly important about their resume or headshot or, you know, the information, the editorial um projects that uh, we have at Backstage are really exciting and and um, and I think you know Hannah you said you said something similar to this I think we've all we're, we all feel passionate about this about um, feeling like we're giving as much opportunity and information to both creators and actors as possible and I don't I don't think anyone else does that and I and I know we're on a backstage podcast. I know we're both, we all work for backstage, but I, I feel like I feel passionate about that. You know, like I feel like we do, we do something really, um, really special in that way. I could just kind of, uh, uh, overflow with it anyway, with all that silly gush that I just had there. Um, I'd love you guys to share something exciting or, you know, some good news about the regions that you guys are working in and what you're seeing at the moment. Hannah, I'd love to start with you because I feel like the UK has been so consistent with casting calls, even though uh, there's been lockdowns kind of rolling throughout the year. And I've I've really been surprised. I keep on covering it. I've been surprised about the quality of the, the casting calls that are coming out. So I'd love I'd love you to chat about that a little bit. Yeah, it's been crazy. And it's been really amazing to be involved in a casting platform that is really busy right now, because I think I'm getting an understanding of how the industry is actually looking. Whereas I think if I was just casting, I would feel quite shut off from that and feel like doom, like nothing's going on. Um, But yeah, it's been really, I mean, obviously we've had dips in things, but um, it's been quite consistent in in other areas. I mean, last week, so uh, yeah, what are we now? March 9th. So last week, the first week of March was the highest amount of castings that we had since February 2020 in the UK. So that's amazing to see. And in the UK, what's happening right now, just to give you a bit of a, a picture, is probably like for the last eight months, um, at the first eight months of lockdown, the projects that were going were the things that had real budget behind them so that they could get in line with all the protocols and things. But now in the last, probably since January, even though we were in a serious lockdown again, uh, loads of BBC and BFI shorts are being made and student films are starting to be encouraged in some ways to start getting things going with um, different ways of shooting them, which I'm sure we're going to get into with bubbles and at home shooting and yeah, all of those things. So so yeah, it's definitely improving. Yeah. So Christy, as someone on the grind in LA at the moment, um, you know, I have a lot of friends that are in casting. And at the very start of lockdown, of course, it was kind of limited. It was an, some of my animation friends were working consistently, but that was about it. Um, and then there's been a lot of kind of rolling lockdowns in LA, but but there's still been some big projects for TV and film that have been kind of soldiering through, right? Kind of going through their um, shutdown of set and being two weeks shut down and then starting over again. Um, what other things are happening? What, what are, you know? Can you tell us a little bit about projects in LA and what you're seeing? Yeah, so similar to what Hannah's seeing in the UK, I think LA is has had a tough year. <laughs> and I think if I was still in in maybe working in a traditional casting office, you would you would you would feel isolated. Some of the people I talked to have said that, you know, it's it's been now a full year of not having consistent work, but more and more everyone I speak to has said that they're starting to feel like things are getting back to normal that they're starting to see the the normal rate of production happen. Um, the other thing that I think is interesting about Los Angeles and why I love this city so much is that um, it's kind of an unending creativity in the people here. So one of the things that we've seen happen just right and left since pretty much since the beginning of lockdown last year is that we're seeing more and more commercials that are, are shooting remotely or shooting via user generated content. Um, as a way to a keep the the commercials and the production companies and the brands functioning, but it's also served this really great purpose of keeping all the actors busy. Um, yeah, huge so, trend. Yeah, huge trend, and and it's been great. And 
I think LA is a city where everybody is a little bit of a multi hyphenate. And so I think that's part of why it's thrived here is that so many of the actors in the city have some sort of production experience. And so transitioning to creating their own commercial shoots from home has been something that's that's very much thrived here in the last year. And we've seen some really great, well-paying notices come through the site for that, where, you know, maybe two years ago, that wasn't really a thing that happened, was people shooting their own commercials in their home. Yeah, and I think that's it's what's fascinating about that um, and what I'm kind of curious as we move into 2021 and really, you know, in a vaccinated world is how much of that stays because I think that there's definitely an appetite for authentic connection and the user-generated kind of testimonial style commercials that have become so popular um, and are so kind of friendly for budgets of all types, right? Like, you know, that digital media, it's how we're, we're kind of more accustomed as viewers and as customers to see that. And um, and I, I, I'm, I'm watching that. I, I think that that's just going to keep on um, expanding. And, and for actors that are listening, you know, it, it's just so wise to be thinking about how to be better at self-tape, how to be better at that type of thing and whether or not you need to invest in, in um, you know, a, a, a really great phone with with your, uh, you know, the most the best camera that you can, et cetera, you know. Um, and, and, and Sonia, so you joined the team in August. The reason is uh, we were expanding our voiceover um, abilities on this site, which was super exciting. We didn't have voiceover profiles for actors until last year um, because we just had you know, normal acting profiles. And then we had seen even before the pandemic started that um, there was this this kind of new emerging trend for voiceover and we really wanted to help our actors express themselves in that way. So I'd love you to share some of the wins that we've had this year and, um, you know, some of the most exciting kind of voiceover things that you see happening. For sure. So voiceovers seen growth um, since 2020. Um, I think a lot of creators are turning to voiceover and in, in, to get their projects done. And, and there's so much opportunity for voiceover work. Um, everything from podcasts, what we're on right now, to um, commercials and, you know, in the digital ad space, social media ads, to e-learning projects and, and everything in between. You know, there's so many different use, use cases for a voiceover. And so I think actors can really lend their talents to voice acting and really find some great opportunities out there. And I'm so excited that Backstage has decided to embrace voiceover and create this voiceover talent profile for actors to explore. And I think some of the, the great successes as well is that there's a very supportive online community for voice acting, um, not only through backstage and the resources that are provided through podcasts like this one and the editorial uh, content um, that uh, Backstage Magazine's putting out, but also, um, you know, actors in the voiceover community is very supportive. So if you ever have questions or if you want to learn how to get started, you're able to connect um, with other voice actors and with other resources that can help guide you through. And so it's it, it makes for a really great transition and, and growth opportunity for acting. And yeah, I just, I think it's a really exciting time specifically for backstage as we develop this voiceover profile, um, including pre-screen auditions. So the ability to audition with a, a, a custom audition or a sample script, you know, putting your voice and your talents in front of creators, building those relationships. I think it's super exciting and there's lots of opportunity here. Yeah, you know, I love that you just brought up pre-screen and it kind of ties into what Christy was saying about um, user-generated content. And we've had some um, actors ask questions about this new way of doing it, right? Because normally it's it's the other way around. You do your, you know, you put in your headshot resume as part of your application and then you hope that they ask you for additional material like a self-tape or they bring you in for the audition. And it is more common in voiceover. And, you know, Sonia, you really help me understand that better because it's not a space that I've had a lot of experience in. Mm -hmm. um, that it's very common to be asked to record just a tiny bit of of material as part of your audition to be considered, right? That's right. Yeah. It really allows the creator to hear 
your voice, what you sound like, um, you know, using your equipment or whatever studio setup you have, and then also how you interpret the artistic direction. So instead of just having a, de- a generic reel, having that custom audition really allows the creator to to make that decision and really speeds up the casting process. So, yeah. Yeah. And similarly, I know, um, you know, Hannah, you were saying that you were in reality and kind of casting producing once upon a time before before kind of moving into other areas of casting and I'm hearing a lot of feedback that that's a super useful tool for that type of thing right because you get to kind of explore the person with a little bit of additional material yeah I I actually didn't know about the pre-screening thing as well because I've never worked at the the voiceover casting world is so so separate so that's a really interesting thing that I've learned from Sonia and um at the moment for things that are looking for contributors like what we're saying about um people shooting by themselves from home um my partner actually at the moment is shooting something for MTV and the contributors that they've got they're sending them kit so they can shoot the thing in their actual house which I just find just crazy and he's directing it remotely so um everything that you were saying earlier christine about um people needing to get goods or um at least have practice some sort of setup at home um is becoming ever more prevalent yeah really great to hear that that's kind of similar in the uk too you just never know again the uk and the us can feel like two different beasts sometimes about how, how we're going about things but certainly right now um this pandemic world, uh, we're all kind of, we're figuring it out together. And I think that that's exciting for, um, for people emerging and starting in the business, right? You know, Christy, I know that you speak to, I do too, as part of um, our programs at Backstage, we speak to a lot of students um, in the film industry um, that are going to be the creators of tomorrow or the creators of today, because they're doing their thesis pieces and things like that. Um, uh, can you speak to a little bit about what what you're seeing, you know, what they're up to this year? Absolutely. And I, I think it's been a bit of a moving target as schools have, have changed and had to update their COVID protocols, depending on where we are. Um, but I think, again, the endless creativity of film students is that they're always going to find a way to make interesting content. Um, And so I'm actually, it's interesting that you say that, Hannah, about them sending a kit because many of the film schools that I've been speaking to are doing the same thing, where the students will pick up equipment from school and drop it off at their actors' places and record everything remotely. Um, I've also seen film students start to really utilize voiceover in an interesting way to add actors into their films in a way that keeps them safe and keeps them within the school's protocols as well. Um... Just in the last few weeks, we've seen a lot of schools kind of get back to work. Many of the schools in California that had shut down student production this year or really, really limited what student production was able to do this year are just starting to kind of open things up and let students get back to the business of production, um, which has been a really exciting thing to see, to see those spring thesis films, to see um, even just our our day-to-day student films that are so much the bread and the butter in California um, get back to work. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that that's so exciting about hearing that about students because uh, yeah, it, the, 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 the creators of tomorrow are going to be doing something a little bit differently because they have had this difficult time and I'm continuously excited to see, you know, the, the new types of casting that's happening. And so it's exciting to know that there'll be more student castings coming onto the site if you're an actor, but also that those projects might be even more exciting to be involved with because you're not going to be doing something quite, quite the same, right? And I don't think we should. I think I'm excited to, to have the opportunity to blow the lid off what we what we think of as creation, right? You know, like, you know, and we, what we think of as casting. And, and so when I was talking to students this year, I was also like, okay, well, you know, you've got these challenges and now you get to try to solve this Rubik cube that no one's had to solve before. And, um, and I think that you're going to come up with better solutions and, and more inclusive solutions, right? You know, 
we of course have had very important conversations across the world this year about Black Lives Matter and and they're overdue and equality in all different types of aspects of casting. Um, but we need to catch up on uh, uh, at the same time of other issues like um, inclusion for you know, being able to be considered for that audition because you might be remote and you may not be able to take a full day off to go to an audition. And so, you know, these remote opportunities are are really exciting. The thing that, you know, pre-screen, as you mentioned, Sonia, or, you know, self-tapes and and, um, Luke touched on it a little bit, the remote auditions um, that are kind of now becoming a little more normal. Um, You're a wealth of knowledge, ladies, uh, and I'm excited to have you, especially because it is Women's History Month. So it's awesome to feature so many awesome females that are at Backstage. Uh, And if you were to give voiceover or acting a quick little bit of advice to our listeners who might want to get into either or that are currently acting or auditioning, um, what would it be? Oh, I'm happy to hop on here. So I think the exciting opportunity with voiceover is that it can be done from home and it really broadens, it eliminates the location and needing to be in studio to to book jobs. And I think the piece there, the advice there is that creators are really looking for quality. So I think it's really important to understand your recording space, understand your recording equipment, Um, you know, maybe seek out some coaching or some advice from someone that you trust or, you know, check out backstage articles, educate yourself a little bit and and put some time into um, working on your audio quality to make that the best it can be. Because I think that is what's going to set you apart when you are recording and submitting those auditions. Fantastic. Hannah? Um, the main thing that I would say at the moment, if you're an actor, actually, I'm going to do two really quick. The first one is I love just, it. <laughs> just keep going. It's really difficult. If you get bogged down by social media, people announcing exciting events and things that they're being involved in, please don't feel like everything's happening and you're, it's not happening for you. Things are happening slowly, but slowly is, is the dominant word in that. So just keep going and keep yourself motivated. Um, the other thing that I would say, just a practical piece of advice is, and um, we've spoken um, about uh, perfecting your self tape. Um, but another thing that I find so much at the moment with um, with auditioning on remotely is that people um, tend to have a great self tape, but then they don't know what they're doing on Zoom. And because we're doing everything on Zoom, just make sure that you know what you're doing and that you're gonna be, uh, you're directing, the, to the speaker and how you're going to pin them on the screen so that you're looking directly at them and just make sure that you're in the right space for it and all of those things. So just um, think about the self tape, but also think about the Zoom recall because I do see a lot of people making a few mistakes there. Yeah, and that's callback in British. Recall is is callback in American because <laughs> I had to learn that when I first moved over. I would call. I would say everything was a recall, and, <laughs> and all my American friends wouldn't know. Um, Christy, what what would be your few tips if, or one tip if you have one? Yeah, um, you know, I one of the things that I think would really be beneficial for actors right now is to look seriously at student film. I think it's easy for actors who have been working consistently to kind of skip over that category because they're not as high paying roles or they're not as prestigious roles. But I think that the creativity and the the problem solving, the creative problem solving that's happening in student film right now is well worth taking a look at. I think as far as finding interesting material for your own reel, getting to know those filmmakers of tomorrow, and then also seeing what production's going to look like in the next few years because those graduating film students are going to set the tone for so much of what's going to happen in the next few years of the industry. So I would say if student film is something that you've maybe skipped over in the past, I think it's something that should be looked at very seriously right now. I love that. And also, you know, just even if you're a sag after actor, there are a lot of really, really great sag after film agreements for students that protect you. So, you know, it's not just for non-union actors and and it might be something that's worth revisiting. I I love that. Um, before we kind of sign off, I normally do some casting calls of the week. This week I've asked you guys to bring some casting calls. Um, Sonia, do you have a casting highlight for voiceover? I sure do. 
Coronation Media is casting worldwide for a voiceover to play St. Oscar Romero in a short animated film. Very cool. Details on the site? Details on the site. I also have another one and maybe Ooh. you can pick one or both to share. There's just lots. No, I'd There's love lots it. of great voiceover opportunities happening right now. And yeah, it was hard to pick I'd one. I'd love so. to hear your second okay, cool. one. Yeah. Uh, the second one is uh, New York Post is casting a voice actor for Surviving NYC. It's a voiceover driven explainer video on how to survive life in New York City. Oh, that's a great one. Thank you for sharing that second one. I love it, Sonia. Christy, do you have one for us? I do, actually. Um, we have a production company in L.A. that is casting for what sounds like a really great commercial for um, Soundbox speakers. Um, for It's a high-strung outdoor surprise party, surprise birthday party for a dog, which sounds like not <laughs> only a, a safe way to shoot in L.A. right now to do something outdoors, but also sounds like a blast to be on set for. <laughs> That's a fun one. Thank you, Christy. And then Hannah, do you have a highlight for the UK? Yes. So um, just to uh, some be in a nice summary for everything that we've spoken about today, there's a commercial that's cast in at the moment for um, a Record at Home presenter. Uh, so um, check that out on the website, play in age 25 to 35. And I believe you shoot it yourself with your own phone. <laughs> Fantastic. And I always like to say, you know, these are highlights, but there are literally hundreds of casting calls for every type of actor from every region on Backstage.com. Go check it out. Um, this is, uh, it's been a joy to speak to you ladies. Thank you for spending the last kind of 30 minutes to 40 minutes with us um, and sharing your knowledge. That's all from me at Break a Leg and all your upcoming auditions, dear listeners, and have a beautiful, beautiful week. In the Envelope is recorded at Lotus Productions and Hyperbolic Audio in New York City and Soundbox LA, Mark Grau Studios, and Buzzies in Los Angeles. Thanks as always to our producer extraordinaire, Jamie Muffet, and to the team at Backstage, Samantha Sherlock, Mark Stinson, Caitlin Watkins, and of course, Casey Howe. Visit Backstage.com, and don't forget, you can subscribe to Backstage by using the code ENVELOPE at checkout for a free trial. That's right, 100% free. For more exclusive content, join us on Facebook and Twitter at In The Envelope, and subscribe, share, and leave a comment. Who would you like us to interview next? Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time for another glimpse in the envelope.